welcome. We are here oh, talking man. about clubs and neighborhoods, going through some forum posts and some awesome ideas that Savannah outlined. Um, John, if you want to maybe just briefly recap the agenda real quick and we can dive in. Yeah, I'll go ahead and screen share here. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, basically, you know, Savannah has been very excited about building the fractal for Boulder. Um, and we think this is a really compelling and interesting way to start building the evolution of clubs um, that can grow into neighborhoods. And um, we are planning to put together a cohort of people who are interested in doing this. Um, and uh, Savannah is very excited to spearhead this. And so um, we wanted to kind of have a, a little meeting to talk about the structure of that, what it might look like, how all this might work, um, and then, you know, basically start to, to put together this, this cohort. Um, so that's the plan. And uh, I'm terrible at multitasking. So as I was talking about that, I was not, in fact, also successfully uh, <laughs> screen sharing. Take your time. Um, it's all good. There we go. Okay. We got it now. Desktop one share. Boom. Okay. I think you can see that, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to review some some forum posts, talk about the framework for cohort groups, um, and then see how we can can uh, start working on this. Um, so one one framework that I've been thinking about before we, we jump in here is what is a neighborhood? Um, because I think we've this definition, you know, has evolved and, and will continue to evolve over time. Um, and there, there's a couple of versions of this that I want to make sure when we use the word neighborhood, we, you know, sort of know what we're talking about here. Um, so the, the kind of first version of cabin neighborhoods that we built, um, you know, over, over the last like 18 months or so was about co-living in nature. These were typically like week, week to month type stays or like multi-month stays, flexible short-term co-living um, that people, you know, were, were it's rental base and typically at like rural co-living houses. Um, what we're going to be talking about here is like a slightly different version of neighborhoods, which is more like fractal for X, which is like probably slightly longer term, months to years, maybe rental, maybe buying um, and built on top of and within existing urban neighborhoods um, and, and like grown from um, local clubs in those urban neighborhoods. Um, and then there's a third version, which, you know, may or may not come up in the context of this conversation and may actually be like related to, to these other two, um, which is kind of the long-term goal of neighborhoods for families. How do we think about neighborhoods with like years to decades of time horizon, mostly oriented around um, intergenerational living and, and families, which probably people are going to want to like buy property for um, and could even include things like land grant locations. So um, this is like, you know, what I had shared in my post about Prospera and like their interest in potentially working with us on something like this from a, a land grant perspective. Um, so the focus for today is this second one, fractal for X. How do we, how do we basically grow clubs into neighborhoods um, in, in areas that uh, are sort of already existing places, but don't have tight, dense social networks, um, IRL. And uh, on this note, Savannah has put together this very helpful uh, response to, to this post in the forum, where she talked about three things that Cabin can provide here, sending aligned people, um, peer learning neighborhood uh, guild or cohort, and financial support. Um, so, um, Maybe, and then you have a couple of really good open questions here. And I'd love to actually like really get to these because I think this is the core of the model that we have to figure out is like citizenship yeah. has meant one thing. Um, and that thing has been mostly about that first version of neighborhoods. Um, mm -hmm. And what we're talking about here is potentially like an evolution of citizenship or uh, something like that, um, or, or an evolution of the model. And we need to figure out like, what's the thing that actually is going to make sense here to build something sustainable that provides a lot of value to, um, you know, people that want to build things like, like what you want to build Savannah while also, you know, making sense for, for cabin to be able to sustainably do this over time. Yeah. Um, so that, that's my like opening spiel framework. So then <laughs> Love I'd love it. for you to maybe just give, um, a little bit of context about like the relative importance of these three things mm -hmm. and in particular, you know, what you've seen so far around like, um, you know, like the uh, sending aligned people, 
um, like financial support, obviously the peer learning group ha hasn't started yet, but like what specifically you see as the opportunities here. And then we can dive more into um, these like questions around making it mutually beneficial and making it work with the existing membership offering. Totally. Um, yeah. So I think, I think folks can, we can, you know, in the, the YouTube video of this, we can link to this post so people can actually read it uh, in earnest, but um, yeah, just to speak to more to each of these, the first one, send a line people, um, right now in my neighborhood, we'll call it the North Boulder neighborhood. Um, I'm trying to do two things. I'm trying to convene my existing neighbors and see if there's enough alignment and congruence to like build something fractal like here with the people. And there's, there's already been a lot of interest, like, um, we had a, I told you this, uh, John, but for your sake, Matai, we had a dinner party where 17 people in my building came and that's like more than half of the building. So we're like getting people to come. Um, and I gave a little speech that was like, I didn't mention fractal cause like most people don't know what fractal is, but I intend to share that link and like, and I've been seeding that with certain people and like sending them content about fractal. Uh, but like gave a little speech and was like, I want to live near my friends. I know I don't want to make us become best friends if that's not what would organically happen. But I want to make that like possibility really easy to achieve if it is what wants to happen here. And so John, my partner, John, uh, John Borichevsky and I, like, we started a WhatsApp group so that like, everyone can organize. And then it's one of those WhatsApp communities where like, anyone can make their own little sub WhatsApp chat. And so now there's like a craft circle chat that has like emerged because people want to craft together. And we're going to do like a uh, regular, but like probably Sunday nights, but also people are just like neighbors are already saying like, yeah, just come over tonight. I'm have, I just would love to have people over and play a board game night. So there's just the like convening neighbors who do not know the word network cities at all. Like just, it's not on their, <laughs> it's not in their, their worldview yet. Um, which I think could actually pose like a challenge. Like it's, it's a distinctly different direction than what we're talking about. And I'm like holding that. Um, but putting that aside for a second, the other goal is of course, to talk about this, uh, to talk about, to, to bring in cabin folks who want to redesign cities, who want to um, live in community, you know, it's an eight minute walk to the trails here in our neighborhood. So it's like, we have that, na that nature aspect that's here. Um, so back to this point, send aligned people. I am seeking to like build a community of the neighbors that are already here, but it would be such a like hack to just have people who are already stoked about this, this concept of building community of aligned people of, of friends to just like, be dropped into our lives and for us to say yeah there's an apartment in our building opening next month do you want to come like tour this come to events you know John and I are thinking about maybe one day renting out one of the units here and then like having a flow of people subletting it so that they can check out the place kind of thing so it's just like I'm already looking to my current group of friends who who want to live in this way. I'm looking to the neighbors who are already here. Um, but there's a lot of sort of onboarding and education that's part of that with, that I'm super stoked to do. But it also would just be really exciting to take people who are already values aligned and bring them in. So that's some more on that point. Um, and then Peer Learning Neighborhood Guild. I just think like wouldn't it be amazing if the people of cabin who are building neighborhoods could actually like share insights and accelerate what we're doing because we're learning from each other. It's basically the point there. And I'm really excited about feedback loops. Like what are the ways that we can harvest up not only learnings, but like what people who are coming to, who are participating in these neighborhoods who are either cabin members or not, like are saying they want so that cabin can be, uh, can add as much value as possible. And then financial support, I mean, that's like totally something for us to figure out. And 
I, of course, I'm like just excited to figure all that out with you. Um, but to to speak to it, like we already have the the shape of supper clubs where cabin subsidizes food for events. I can tell that there'd be like excitement for a, a rental of a third space, the rental of a room in one of the units to serve as a guest room. But like, like I've seen Matai speak to like, how can that be built into financial incentives? So it's like, if you reach some degree of uh, size and there's like ex cabin members that are funding the legitimacy of that money coming back, like then it makes sense. Like totally want to figure that out. Um, so yeah, I, I think much, much of it is here. Um, yeah, that's a super helpful summary. Yeah. Um, I think your questions at the bottom of this post are like particularly on point because yeah. it's kind of a, it's a different model, um, mm -hmm. right? Like the, the kind of original model of citizenship is like access to these rural co-living neighborhoods, as well as this basket of other benefits. Um, and if you're a digital nomad, you know, traveling around to different places, it sort of like makes sense to have a network of these places to, to bop around to. Um, if you are like participating in a local club and, you know, ideally like starting to grow, um, you know, a neighborhood or, or like a fractal for X, obviously that's an incredibly valuable thing and something that like we, we want to support, but it's a little bit harder to imagine what the, what, what cabins like model and role is there. Um, yeah. In particular, because like you said, most of these people, you know, they don't know what fractal is. They don't know what network cities are. They want to craft together. They want to eat together. Um, yeah. But they like don't necessarily, it's hard, it's harder to figure out like what's the incentive alignment that like makes them want to be cabin citizens or what's the set of benefits that like makes them want to be cabin citizens or, or something of that nature. Could, could you speak to you know, your, your kind of core question there and, and any thoughts you have about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, well, I think you're speaking to like a number of the questions. So I'll kind of just tick them each off. Um, but the first thought that comes to my mind when you say all that is like, when it comes to this neighborhood guild, um, what I'd really like for, for to ha what I'd really like to happen there is that a number of different people are running experiments, small bets to be like, to explore uh, what is the best way that we could build these these neighborhoods. So I could see like, I'm running the experiment of, I'm trying to do two things. I'm engaging my current neighbors and I'm bringing in cabin people. Does that work is, a, is my experimental question. Or must it just be cabin folks pick a neighborhood and they all like start renting and buying properties together and it's focused and like the membership incentives align really nicely. Like those just seem like two worthwhile experiments to run. And of course the context is gonna affect a number of factors. Um, but I just like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I think like we'll only understand those frictions when we start running small experiments and, and seeing what happens. Right. Um, yeah, so so let's imagine for a second, cause I think that's that's a great question. And I think the answer like almost necessarily has to be that it's a, a combination of like both groups, yeah. but like, I don't, I can't really imagine like if, if we're just going to get only cabin people and like nobody who's already living there, um, then we might as well like move to Timbuktu, you know, like, <laughs> like we, uh, uh, that, that maybe more is like the third model, you know, where it's like, we're going to go like somewhere greenfield and, and build a development from scratch for, for cabin families. And, and like, maybe that's an eventual state we get to. But I think in this model where we're building like the fractal for X, the big unlock and opportunity of it is that we can tap into existing people who live in a place. Like that, that's like the whole, it's so much easier for you to get your neighbors in your building to come to a dinner party, you know, than to like get people who live somewhere else to come. Um, and maybe eventually once we have the fractal of North Boulder, there will be people who want to move there. Um, but like to start, it almost necessarily has to have, be more like people who already live there. Um, so given that, um, what like, imagine with us maybe like, what is a model here that makes sense? Like what is something, forget anything about how citizenship works right now, 
you know, or, or how cabin works right now. And just paint, paint for us a picture of like, what is, um, you know, what, what is a like model that your neighbors might be actually interested in or excited about? In terms of like cabins relationship cabins to this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think what my neighbors and I, I'll speak for myself and I'll speak to the conversations I've had where I've brought up cabin and that's like the scope of what I, I know. Um, like my neighbor, Sarah, she's aware of cabin now. She's checked it out. Like I told her about the, the seven days in Austin uh, offering and she's like, oh, cool. Like send me the link. So that's like, you know, at least a warm, a warm signal. Um, I think what she wants and what I know I want is like more people. <laughs> I want more people who want to build this thing with me um, and who actually like hold the vision of co-living in their heart alongside me. Um, so hence the like backhaul, bringing people in piece. Um I think there's just functional, functional ways. I feel like I'm going to repeat my post a little bit, but like there's, there's, there's just like functional things that we might need to make that happen. Like making it really easy for someone to drop into this neighborhood that's being built. So like John, my partner, John, and I don't have like a guest room, but if we had a guest room, it'd be so amazing to like have people stay there and come to a week of events and go for a hike and like see how easy it is to walk a block to the grocery store and the coffee shop, you know, like have those experiences mm -hmm. and be like, fuck, I don't get this in my, uh, in my current, you know, suburb of Denver right now, but I'd really like that. Like a try before you buy option. Yeah. Um, cause I know that fractal has a, they have a rule where you, you could, in, in order to join fractal and actually live there, you need to sublet for one month in their building before mm -hmm. they even allow people to join. Um, Interesting. What does it mean to join in this case? Like, couldn't someone just rent an adjacent apartment? Are you asking about fractal or yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I think it's like, I mean, I'm speculating now, but I think it's like join their discord, come to events. I know they have infrastructure around like they, two of their apartments in their apartment building uh, have co-working spaces so like the common space is big enough where they've actually just built it to be for co-working during the day and then another one is like more for whole hosting events and so they fractal as a whole like all pays a little bit of money each month to offset the rent of those units that those individuals pay because they're collectively using it so it's like joining means being a part of the, the internal communications and having access to those invitations. It looks like they have some sort of external communications because I know there's like at least a hundred people that are not inside of Fractal but are coming to events that are like the surrounding friendship group. Um, and then of course, like getting to live in the units, like someone could join, could like jump into their apartment building um, but they may not be invited into those events and those communication streams. And then I assume part of membership is actually paying money to have access to these parks, like third spaces. Right. right. I'll, I'll just jump in real quick with one, um, you know, idea of, of what a mature setup could look like. And I'm not sure if Fractal does this or not, but just thinking about some of the co-living houses in uh, San Francisco is where essentially they wind up negotiating the lease of the entire building with the owner group um kind of removing a third party property management firm or them having the additional need for staff to like manage that um and obviously that comes with the needs of like can you fill all the spaces are you willing to take on lease and sublet negotiations um but we have like i've seen it work really well for like a 14 person house and they intentionally always keep some of their rooms open um for subletters to allow that influx um but one thing they have talked about is like you know, in a small group, it can be hard to then manage inflows and outflows. So they're trying yeah. to come up with governance procedures to like help have a balanced group of people living there um, more more along the operation side. But anyway, I think that's a cool potential of where it could go. And also, yes. like, I assume that if the owners don't have to hire a third party property management or staff people to manage negotiations, that could be part of that 
sustainable financial streams to support that local neighborhood as they take on a role where they could potentially like share a percentage of what would normally go to a property management company as that group. Um, something, just an idea to work towards maybe. I love that idea so much. And and what I hear in it is like a shift from sort of the haves and the have nots of like the landlord owns this and has power. And it's like, well, now we're sort of distributing that power to a collective of people who are actually living there and tending that space. So I love that idea. Cool. So, um, get, you know, let's imagine, so let's just like, let's dream for a minute about like what an ideal version of this could look like. Um, so like, let's say, um, you know, maybe in, in your building or, or like whatever, somewhere near, near the park, like what, what would a, um, either like a one bedroom apartment or like a sublet room in an existing apartment rent for, and like, what would it look like for, um, you know, for us to basically have like a, uh, you know, like a cabin room or apartment or something where we could start saying like, Hey, Savannah's doing all this stuff. There's weekly dinner parties. There's all these events happening. Like you can go drop in and see if this is a good fit for you and stay for a week or a month or whatever. What might that look like? Yeah. Are you asking like what the price is and yeah, what the what the price is, how you might envision that sort of thing working? Yeah, it, the price would be like probably to the tune of like seven hundred to eleven hundred dollars, depending on like what unit in what specific apartment building in this area. There's like nicer apartments. There's there's like more less expensive apartments. Um, but yeah, I would imagine there being like a a listing on the directory and the census. And I was thinking about it the other day, like I would love to do a video that's like sped up of like a walk around the neighborhood. And here's like the apartment building, but like, you know, um, address is kind of blurred out or something for privacy. And like, this is how long it takes to get to the grocery store. And this is how long it takes to get to the trail. And like, here's the park on an average day in the summertime and like hear the different things that are happening and like a sense of you know I know like there's kundalini yoga yoga a dance class there's like a fitness class there's weekly volleyball at that north boulder park every week like just a sense of like that's what's happening these are all the different places you can plug into um I would imagine someone like myself hosting that person who comes in if they're like say they're moving they're they're staying for a month at the cabin apartment here in my apartment building um I would want to design some sort of like intentional onboarding even just for them in the trial experience of like sort of a, a group within the community here that's like the welcoming committee and is just like here's how you actually get involved in uh, this community and and understand its its comings and goings and you are welcome to you know unconference style like suggest these events and host them in your place and like people will respond to that like these are the things that you're welcome to do um I'd also want to put something out on the the like listing in the the cabin dot city directory about like these are the people that are already here these are the interests they have. These are the things they're nerdy about. Um, these are some of the archetypes that are present here. If you're like, because it's like people would move there to, to have a friendship circle they could drop into. I think that's like the fundamental value uh, proposition. So it's like, well, who is there? Can you get a sense of them? Is there like a rich media way we can do that? Like some like rapid fire interviews with people to get a sense about what they're nerdy about. So you can actually, if somebody in like, the suburbs of Dallas where I grew up could be like, holy shit, like I now have this remote job and I know about cabin, but I would really love to live by the mountains. Like, this could be the thing, like to actually get a sense of the meaningful details that, that form a sense of home for somebody. I'd want to like actually make that present on the uh, cabin website. And then back to my, I'm kind of 
just spitballing here, but like back to the onboarding, the individual who's there for the month. I, I actually have a friend who I won't name who lived at Fractal for like a few months. And one thing she wanted more of was like a sense of onboarding, a sense of being of like a welcoming ritual into the community. She kind of just felt dropped into it and like expected to figure out how to become a, a integrated member. I would love to like have a flow that's not just like a digital document, but actually like concrete steps that I and other community members are taking where we as the established community with all of the social rapport and you could say the power, like the social power actually are the ones who are asserting our welcoming into their lives as opposed to expecting the individual who's new and potentially shy and unaware of social norms to engage. It's like, let's reverse that and, and really bring them in. Um, that's been really important to be in like every single community I've seen and, and been a part of. So those are some of the things I would, I would do. Um, and I'd wanna like interview them and ask them like upon, like at some step before they actually do move in for that month, I'd wanna be like, what do you want? What do you wanna create? Like, who do you wanna meet? Um, what are you looking for in a sense of home? Cause you wouldn't, if they live in Boulder already dope, like they're probably familiar with Boulder. But if they're moving from some far off place because they're a cabin member and they think this could be a really good fit for them, um, I'd want to be like, what do you want out of a home and how can I help you feel connected to that as somebody who's lived here for like 12, 13 years and feels really connected to many different communities in this town, many different sets of opportunities, many different like social graphs, but also like um, business networks, like the startup scene, the tech scene, like the dance scene. So, right. um, yeah. So let, and, let me go one step further because um, I'm really liking this train of thought. Um, so, you know, I think third spaces are obviously a really important part of, of these types of communities. I'm now wondering like, okay, rather than just like, let's rent a room that cabin citizens can come stay at, to your point about like onboarding and, and like having them feel like they're, you know, dropped right into the center of it. Let's imagine we were um, figuring out a way to rent like a two bedroom apartment that also was the third space for hosting dinner parties. People can go co-work there, like yeah. whatever, right? And um, members of the local community are paying some monthly membership to like be a part of the third space. They can go there whenever they can hang out, they can you know, work, they can do whatever. And also there's these bedrooms, which are, you know, then places where people from the outside can come in and then they're like right in the center of it all. Um, and the the model is some combination of like monthly membership for local people to have this third space plus people coming in, you know, doing these like short-term rentals in the, in the rooms to check it out and see if they want to be a part of it and move there. Does that resonate? Totally, totally. Yeah, I wrote that. I wrote that down in my post. I like yeah. absolutely want that. And I think a two bedroom is a really cool shape for it because I'd want the individual who's testing it out to be like physically in the thick of it. Oh. Um, so, so yeah, I, and I, yes, this is, um, uh, I, sorry, I didn't certainly didn't mean to frame that as like an original idea. No, 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 no. Um, it's totally true. But yeah. I'm building, I'm sort of building up the model of like, how, how could this actually work? I guess the important, like, Part of that question that I really want to specifically get your thoughts on is like, is the willingness to pay there? Do you think that these like other people in your building would be willing to pay? I don't know how much to like have access to this third space and yeah. have new people coming into the community. I don't think we're there yet now, to be honest, but yeah. it's definitely an idea that we are floating and there's, there's like some warmth and some interest from folks. I think, uh, but I, I don't have a sense of that, to be honest. But I do think like it, it feels a little it, it, too fresh for Cabin to be like, we're buying an apartment or we're renting an apartment for Savannah's thing. And like, hopefully it does shit. Like, I think that's way too soon for that. And I would want some, I don't know exactly what, what the the metrics are, but I would I would need to see a lot more proof before like 
realistically inviting Kevin to do that and, and thinking that that would be worthwhile just yet. But do I think that people would be into it? Definitely. I just, I'm at a stage where like, we're still building trust. We're still building relationships. It feels rather new. Like, I think a step before that is like, let's share a Costco membership. Like, you know, like that's, <laughs> right. if people are down to buy in at that level and like organize going and doing Costco runs for like this crew, cause that's something they do at Fractal too. Mm. Like that feels like a level of co-investment that would then tee up a much greater level of co-investment like that. Right, right. So this is when I, cause I think one thing that Cabin can be helpful for at this phase was something we've seen with like, you know, um, our East Denver mansion and some of these other like things we, we've done like that is that um, a big part of the coordination problem is like people are willing to pay for a room in a mansion with other cool people at a conference, but nobody is willing to like front the $10,000 to make that happen. Yeah. And so, you know, that's why I'm, I'm sort of like exploring this model. I totally hear that, that it's like maybe a little soon for that, but how do we, how, how would we get there? Like how, yeah. you know, so it's like, we start with, you know, weekly supper club, you know, um, and maybe we get a Costco membership. I mean, that's like 60 bucks a year, right? Like that's a very feasible thing. Um, how, like how, yeah, how many more steps away or like how, how long do you think it takes or like what is people's, you know, how would we explore people's appetite for like, uh, let's call it, I don't know. I don't know what's reasonable. hundred dollar a month membership to this third space that you can use for dinner parties, co-working, whatever you want. Yeah. I, I don't know how many steps there are. I could brainstorm some, but I know that like fractal has been around for two years and they've built it. So that's a timeline to consider. Um, I know that in our building, like John, my partner did the math and he was like, oh, if 15 of us, I don't know if this is right, but if like half the building put in $150, we could totally get one apartment and split it between all of us. And that's like what he's been kind of floating. Right. Um, Let's see, I, I could just sit and brainstorm. I think a Costco membership, it's like, what do what do people share? I, I think some steps are like collective resource sharing. So a Costco membership is a good example. A CSA is another example. Um, I We've already been doing this loosely, but like, you know, you both know what a buy nothing group is, right? Yeah. Okay, so if, I'll tell you. So it's it's basically a Facebook group. Um, there are they are everywhere, um, and people post things that they don't want anymore, and then people comment and say, "I'll take that off your hands," and then they go and drop it off in their local area, and then people also will post, uh, "I'm in search of X Y Z item," and then people will comment and say, "I actually have that, you know, collecting dust in my garage. I'll give it to you," and that's it. So buy nothing. It's just a gifting economy. Um, and their Facebook groups and they exist everywhere. Um, and so there's there's three in Boulder based on like the different regions in Boulder. And so I've just wanted to, and we've already been doing this um, in our group of just like, hey, I have this thing I don't want anymore. Hey, I'm going out of town and there's all this food in my fridge. That's another like thing. Like I could see if we if we came up with sort of best practices for building cabin neighborhoods. Like I would just put these as ideas of like things you can start to collectively organize around to build trust and to show that you can build things together and keep keep things up, like keep collectively held projects together um, over time. I think it's really just like, can this group of people start sharing things that are valuable to them and are putting money behind that so it could be like like our first event was like last week it was um we're gonna john and i are gonna buy a, a ton of thai food and then everyone venmo us and so that was like we fronted the money in a small way and then everybody venmo us and and we totally made back all the money like it was perfect it was very trustworthy and it was a move a move of like we trust you you trust us took a joke um the trust can't be rushed is the thing. So it's like, I can, 
all of this needs to be organic ultimately. Like I think being aware of suggestions and projects and knowing like what you can do is there. But if, if, you know, six months from now, if I was like coaching somebody on how to build a neighborhood, I would never tell them. And now Costco membership, because like, you just have to kind of be attuned to the relationships that are actually there and the pacing that feels right. Yeah. Um, like my goal right now is just let's have a weekly gathering and let's create systems that support people in organically starting their own events and gatherings and letting ideas bubble to the surface and letting those ideas feel really welcome. Like that's my scope right now. And then supper clubs and just like, how do I weave those people in? That's like where my head's at. Um, But yeah, I think, and then there's, you know, the building and like the, the nature of, the nature of how the buildings ideas and desires are at play. Like I, we've tossed around the idea of like starting a community garden and the like little chunk of land that's, that's here, that's available on the property. And, you know, that entails like the landlord agreeing, but that would be, if they do, then the project would be a way of seeing like, okay, we need to spend a few hundred dollars to like build these raised beds and put in the soil and all that. Like I would look at that project as another signal of like, can we collectively put money towards something that will benefit all of us that we want to continue tending to? Um, And just seeing those as like smaller and smaller steps. And then I would probably say, like, I would love to have a co-working day once a week. Is anyone interested in hosting? Like how many of us work from home already? Organizing that, organizing that. Looking at the friction points of like, oh, is it, wouldn't it be great if we like, is there desire to like do more of this? Do we want to co-work together every single day and then like go back to our home offices for calls and then come back and keep co Like, is that not just the financial incentive of sharing that, but is like the act of the social test of actually doing that together, something we all desire. That would be another like step. Yep. And then only then would I be like, are y'all down to put a hundred dollars in a month to like do this and like really curate our space? And do you have family that wants to come into town? Like what if we had a guest room? Cause none of us have room for guest rooms in our apartment. Thanks. That would be the timeline of events in my head. Yeah. Totally makes sense. Um, and I jump in with a couple of thoughts. Please. Yeah, please. Um, so one, I absolutely love the idea around resource sharing and collectivizing. Um, I, that was like at the uh, after Kift kind of uh, made its community composting transition to um, not have a business supporting it. That was like the most powerful thing we did was share resources. Um, and so the actual the idea that like you can have a list of shared things and we kind of we started to test this with initial community members of like I listed my extra car and I was like, hey, if you want to yes. go off roading, you can use it you know, we'll figure out, maybe I put you on the insurance, my insurance covers people. So you got to figure that. But then it was like, okay, wait, we all have vans. We're van lifers. What if we had collective insurance? What if we had collectors, renters insurance? We actually talked to some lawyers and they were like, hey, if you go and get like 20 people and find a local insurer, they'll definitely give you a discount for 20 insurance plans instead of one. Um, So that's like, those are a little broader, more engaged steps than the Costco membership. But I think like painting the vision of like, here's all the benefits we could get if we collectivized. Some are like the most important one are like, we get to spend more time with each other. We get to make friends, we get to build trust. And all of a sudden we get to share resources that we have um, as one idea that I really love. And I think framing that up would be a huge um, way to help onboard people to this. I also think that like new people until they have this experience aren't going to be as open to it. Some might be inspired through really good storytelling. I love that a lot of the like focus on telling the story of people living at neighborhoods, um, that that's something that I think that we should do more of in East Denver. I'll be I'll be recording as many interviews with people in the community as I can to kind of help bring that to the surface and have been starting to prep it where I am, where we're building a local neighborhood. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that like thinking about the dynamic between cabin and this local group and like why it makes sense to be a part of cabin as a global network. I think that, you know, cabin could invest 
a portion of the fees to run this as a sense of like the value that cabin gets out of this, which is the real world activations, the content from the engagement, and especially like as a way where we could start and pilot this, what would it look like for cabin to run an experiment where they weren't necessarily asking up front for contributions from community, but they're saying, hey, just like we ran our creator residency in neighborhood zero, we could pilot a residency um, or a third space opportunity for like a defined amount of time, one to three months maybe. And it's an upfront investment with like certain goals of like, we're gonna capture a bunch of content around it. We're gonna welcome everyone in the neighborhood to share. And like that I see as a way where we could really quickly go from like, and that's again, the beauty of Cabin is that we have this shared treasury that could quickly deploy and activate with a plan of like how this will really take it to the next level. Because I think this addresses like so many needs of building community at scale to help this movement that we're trying to grow, like people living intentionally with each other. Because whenever I come out of our rural awesome community farm and drive by these massive housing complexes, I'm like, man, how do we help reach those people? Like oh those buildings God. aren't going anywhere anytime soon. No. And and people are gonna keep living there and they're like, they're safe comfortable houses we don't need to tear them down and build new eco villages but how can we bring that vibe to those spaces um and i think that piloting it like finding one community leader who's down to like help lead the charge and then having the cabin network come in to support kind of seeding these ideas and then seeing to what extent the community wants to um participate could be a good way to like grease the wheels, get it rolling, and then have the momentum pick up and keep it going from local support uh, on the ground. So I, I see us like, I, I could see us working on a proposal to request funding from the Dow to pilot this at um, with a space at a neighborhood. Love it. I've never submitted yeah. a proposal before, so I'm, I'm new to that process, but you know, <laughs> the idea that it's yeah. possible and with the like, incubating through cabin labs what we can just get rolling now which is what we're doing here and then building up to a proposal totally yeah I also want to throw in like have you all listened to the or, or just spoken to Jackson about the like house that he was a part of during COVID yep like maybe it's something like that like a smaller version of that where it's like we're having multiple like like if cabin is funding one apartment building but like or, or apartment but there's there's sort of like a sense of we're, we're actually like collectively building a scoped month or three month experience with multiple events that has this intention and people are being interviewed on the way in and saying like what do you want to contribute and I don't know I've just been very inspired by what he and his friends built there and seeing like there could be it could be a scoped thing like Matai is saying that is, is has a lot of energy that people could come in to even if it's like rent an Airbnb near here or sublet like we we figured out using the like live near friends thing that Phil made like we can all drop in around this and we're gonna do this in a neighborhood and see what's really possible if Cabin puts energy behind it. I could just I see something that like that. One crazy thing, when, when the Ethan Denver Mansion canceled on us and rebooked another event and we had to find another one, I was looking around like frantically trying to find new spots. And I realized that we could have had a whole month rental of some other, they weren't as nice as that, but they were short-term corporate leases that were a similar price, but they just required yeah. a background check and you know many months ahead of time of planning to secure that lease. Um, but I think like that could be as we activate around these conferences, what if there's a house open for a month that people can tap into as one way? Um, but yeah, love, love the idea around trying mm -hmm. to pilot this. And we've been at our friend's, um, farm where we hope to start a neighborhood. So just where we at, we're in Ohio, it's like 25 minutes up the hill from our friend's farm in Fillmore. And we want this to yeah. be like one broader neighborhood, um, initiative. And, uh, they've been talking about like, what if we made it? a game and like what is the game of like tapping into the farm and like coming to see how you want to co-create and at our supper club that we're hosting this weekend we're actually going to be like introing the game and like um the owner has some fun storytelling planned where he's going to like kick off this journey and he's like imagine we're all on a ship he's working on this this crazy story to like 
um, help people play in this game and think about how they want to contribute and show up. Um, but you know, this is a this is a scenario where he's kind of open to giving people free housing who want to wow. come contribute because he's kind of self seeding this project right now. And I think that like I've been struggling to convince him that like, hey, you should sign up for cabin membership. Um, <laughs> and I think that so this type of support is exactly like what would get him really excited to to be like, okay, yes, I want more of these aligned people coming in and participating. Um, and the broader structural support, because like, imagine if everyone had to figure out these, this framework on their own, like the beauty of what cabin can bring is this well-defined, iterative, evolving framework that we can collectively build up through the neighborhood guild and more. 100%. That sounds so awesome. And I, yeah, I just want to know, like, if there's a chance for you, and I'm sure you're having these conversations, but like to ask him, like, these are some of the current membership benefits in cabin. Just give me like your yay, nay, like meh, fuck yes to, to all of them. Like what actually gets a yes out of him? And like, oh, these are some of the things we're thinking about. Any any interest in this? Does this light you up? Does this feel valuable? Like, and I think sometimes people, like you said, like it's hard to actually visualize the impact of the value of different things without experiencing it. And like when people say online community network, it's like, cool, you have a discord or it's like, holy fuck, there's like people who actually can help make my vision come true. And there's funding and there's investment and there's co like collaborators, like feeling that versus just using the words as those are distinct things. But I, I want to like hear from him and know what, where his yes is and where his no is. And that's like very telling to feed into what this, our membership could become. Totally. Yeah. On that note, um, I do have some sense of this from, you know, talking to lots of citizens. Um, mm -hmm. And the the interesting thing here is that like citizenship is a bundle of benefits, but there's like typically one benefit that's like the one that people that a person is most excited about. The yeah. problem is it's not the same one for you know everyone. Um, yeah. And so like just looking at the most recent people who have become citizens, you know, there's um, the the most like top reasons why they want to be citizens number one actually may just be that they like want to be a part of this idea, this meme, this community, um, you know, but it's like, like you said, very hard to like explain or sell that to someone. Um, number two is typically that they want to list a property in the network. Um, yeah. Number three is that they want to get reimbursed for supper clubs. Um, number four is that they want to live in the network. Um, and number five is, you know, one of the other benefits typically like coming to participate in a specific um, gathering or like headline event that we're doing, um, like the, the Eat Denver Mansion, for instance. Mm -hmm. So those are like five very different personas, benefits, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and that's part of what's challenging here is like you, we sort of have to have this basket of things but it attracts different people for different reasons yeah well it just it, it makes me think about um i'm blanking on like all the words but like you have the the sort of different archetypes of people who show up to cabin like the the artist archetype and the like builder archetype and it's like yeah there's different archetypes like we're all citizens of like this global community to sound a little trite, like we're gonna have different roles. Um, so it's really good to know, but I'm also just like, oh, that duh, like, of course it's not uniform. Like people wanna play different roles in any city context they're in. Totally. I think what's hard though, is that like, and this has always been a struggle for us as a community is like, ultimately what ties the community together is that they wanna be a part of the community like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like true. That, that's the the core product and you know persona to some extent is just like the people who show up which i understand is like a tautology and makes it very hard to like then build specific product for because that's not how typical like typically you want to have like a really clearly defined persona a single mm -hmm. persona that you can focus on you know a sort of single product use case for and what's challenging is that 
um, I think we do need to focus more. Like we can't be a rural co-living network for nomads and, you know, a network of fractal for X's and uh, like, you know, um, like real estate development arm for family neighborhoods in places, you know, like it, yeah. we can't do all of these things at once. We have a very small team and limited resources. Totally. Um, and so um, like, I think there's a lot that feels very exciting to me about supporting these fractal for, for X's um, in terms of like impacts, so what, what Matai was saying about like, not everybody's going to move to an eco village, but like, how do we meet people where they already are and, and like help them build these types of communities where they already are. Um, and then help other people move to those places. That's a way easier lift than the coordination problem of like everybody go to this spot in the middle of nowhere at the same time. <laughs> and, you know, um, the critical mass that you need to make that happen is like a much bigger activation energy. Um, so I get excited about the fractal for X, mm -hmm. but on the flip side, I, this is why I think it's it's really important to figure out like what's the model where cabin can actually make this make sense because it's easy to see how we can spend infinite money uh, yeah. supporting supper clubs and renting apartments and whatever. For sure. um, but like, yeah, ultimately, like I, I read this great line in a book I'm reading right now about some of these crazy ideas by the dude who created Ciudad Morazan. Um, and he's got this line that's like, um, charity is great, but it's inherently stagnant. The only way to make something that grows and has life to it is for it to be financially sustainable a relationship of value exchange that everyone's opting into right makes sense um so let's bring this back back down to reality for a second because i think i just i got a little abstract there um you mentioned like this stuff of course takes time and like let, let's say that our our end goal um is we have a third space where you know cabin can like front signing a lease or something like this you know but ultimately that's going to cost whatever a thousand dollars a month for a year like minimum lease so we're like on the hook for twelve thousand dollars i'm just talking theoretically here for sure broad numbers um but like some that's probably a very hard thing to get a community to commit to is like signing a year-long lease for a third space maybe that's somewhere where, where we can actually help um but to your point we can't just like like it would be kind of crazy to just go like sign a lease right now in your apartment building so how do we how do we get there do we do supper clubs <clears throat> you know we we try out co-working like we see like it's not actually that let's say we if you can get a dozen people to chip in a hundred bucks a month like that'll that'll cover it and if we know that we've got that type of commitment we can front the money right um so like how do we get to that point where we get the first dozen people to say like, yes, I would pay a hundred bucks a month to have a third space in our community where we can host things and co-work and bring in new people and start to grow this thing. Yeah. I, I, I don't have the, like the perfect step-by-step -step cause it's, like I said, it's organic and it's in relationship, but it feels really clear to me. It's just like regular gatherings, some of which are supper clubs, some of which are just the people who are here are, are having events because they freaking want to. And then it's someone like me, you could say is like the neighborhood steward here is layering in opportunities for uh, collectivizing different resource sharing opportunities, being like, what if we did this? What if we did this? And just sensing like, are you a yes? Are you a yes? Are you a yes? Oh, like, we can do this thing that is more expensive. We can do this thing that's a little bit more expensive. I would love to see the a channel that's like, hey, I'm a part of this thing, cabin, like we, let's talk about it. If you all wanted to become members, we could all go to Neighborhood Zero and like have a group trip like for a week and just sink into other shapes of co-living. Do you wanna do that? Or this these other outposts? Like I'm, I'm interested, this seems a little far-fetched, but I'm like, okay, yes, we need to focus as a, as, a, as a network, but also like the people who live in this neighborhood that Cabin could support, like also want to take vacations. And I love taking vacations that are meaningful and have like a real sense of community. So when I think about the next vacation I want to take, it kind of coincides with like an outpost 
as like something I want to pursue, you know, like, what if we took a group trip here? What, or, you know, it's not an outpost, it's just a group trip. And then maybe it's a cabin outpost group trip. Right, right. Um, or maybe your, your $100 a month membership, not only does that get you your third space, it also then that's how you, you can go stay in the other apartments in other places. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, it, it's it's this interesting thing of like, okay, there's like two layers to it. It's like the people who are already here, the neighbors who don't know about cabin and now some like infilled cabin folks are here too. They're probably going to want like a non-cabin membership to that's just about this thing we're doing. Right. Like it, it makes no sense for like cabin to be a part of that circuit, but it could. I'm trying to make sense of that just like honestly. Totally. Um, but then what is like the larger loop of of now we're in this global network like what is the value of that like we have this scope of other communities building this thing i don't know what that is but um i think one way is just like what are the things we could be collectively doing together is it a costco membership is it a car share and then saying like yeah the the membership to our community is x and it's like at cost and the financials are very public and we want to layer in something like cabin and because like we've already vetted and validated people being willing to co-invest in all these different layered ways like then the cabin layer makes sense because we've had enough feedback loops that's kind of the like shape I'm getting so th there's this concept of fiscal sponsorship that, that open collective introduced me to um, where they have organizations and you can just run your own projects within their entity structure. So this mm -hmm. is how I think Cabin could offer fiscal sponsorship to some of these projects where like, hey, here's our bookkeeping process for if you're at a scale where enough money is exchanging hands that like there's potential yeah. tax considerations or even just like bookkeeping to try and um, streamline what that's going towards. And even the, like there is potential to like have so social clubs can fund in-person gatherings for what they're defined for. You could wrap more and more living expenses into those social club activities to have like member contributions to that social club, sustaining some of their daily basic needs around like car. And, but that, that's like super far out. So I mean, but even just taking it a step back, I see that as a great way of like, it makes sense to be a part of the cabin network because we can govern our own local community project however we really want, as long as we're like operating within alignment to these higher values of like, you know, respect and all the good things that we bring to community spaces, um, where then cabin is helping facilitate some of the like broader logistics and, and providing structure that these groups can easily tap into and start building on. Um, so one thing I was thinking about that's kind of an offshoot, but related is like, if everyone's paying a hundred bucks a month, how many times do I get to reserve it versus how many times does, do you get to reserve it? Uh, one, if, you know, if for people who are friendly with some web three tech, you could have it like where like there's some local governance weighted based on contributions and a local like, you know, timeshare model essentially where based on everyone puts in the same amount, everyone gets the same voting, the same number of days. If you don't use your days, you can offer them up to the community and give them to whoever you want. There could be like a whole fun way of like creating that trust and transparency in the system around how we're pooling money, where funds are going, both in the on-chain side of things. And then what Open Collective offers as a cool platform is like transparent bank account management. So you can come mm -hmm. and you can have like your own little nested community bank account that has public transactions with permissions nested. Um, so like pairing that plus on chain with whatever people are comfortable doing on chain um, could be a really nice management system. And again, this is going to take a bunch of effort if every neighborhood is setting it up and defining these policies and like thinking about how we could have kind of a source repo of like best practices, guidelines, operating procedures that then any other neighborhood can fork and yeah. slightly modify as long as it again, it's staying true to our values um, and culture uh that would be i think a really cool way to allow this to like grow from the seed of which we're planting keeping things kind of reciprocating back into the cabin network um while still really empowering like on the ground local innovation and community building 
yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah, I think like this is the hard part of this model is this question of like, because I, I think actually you do, you you may not need cabin, but you need something to backstop it. Like you mentioned that Phil yeah. sort of like backstopped Fractal, right? When they were mm -hmm. getting started. Um, you need this sort of like fiscal sponsorship or, or, you know, whatever to kind of like backstop, like we're going to sign the lease and like rent this apartment. That's a way harder thing to get. Like you wouldn't, it, like it would be, it would be unreasonable to maybe expect you to like be the backstop, right? For for like your your group. Um, yeah, if we were a bit more flush, I think we might, but like, right. <laughs> like it's, it's just not realistic group. right now. Liability oh. insurance is something that like sucks to have to consider, but like is a real thing. Where, like the the risk of lawsuits is like annoying to the extent of like we should have liability insurance for all of our community properties just to avoid the one in a billion scenario where there's an issue. And it totally. kills the so, whole thing, totally. So yeah, insurance, like lease it, lease signing, you know, the, these things that like you you either need like a a benevolent, you know, hero like Phil to come in and do it, yeah. um, you know, or you need something like Cabin that, that can do that. The problem is um, that's sort of like a necessary starting condition and maybe there's helpful, you know, um, software management layers or liability insurance or like mm -hmm. other ongoing things that, that cabin can provide, but you do need the community to sort of like the local community to sort of like understand and buy into the fact that like, that is value that cabin is providing that like, you know, is worth supporting. Yeah, totally. It, it, it isn't like, I love all these ideas and it doesn't fully feel like the biggest clearest like oh it's this and like anybody would be a yes to it like it, it doesn't yet and I I'm confident we can I'm not confident we we will find something but I think like there's enough here that like there could be a way forward totally. and like I certainly want to find that way forward because like the larger dream of this is to have a network city like to have networked neighborhoods of people that are actually living in alignment with, with what we've been talking about and um the fact that people could actually live this way is so beautiful to me and and then I start dreaming about like you know if 90 percent of my block is really well organized people that actually have the same values what could we do with the actual like infrastructure of this block like this like voting block is powerful because it's so coordinated like that's where I want to go with with neighborhoods um in addition to like the branch of, you know, Phil and and his crew, like, what is it? They called it like Duck Cloud. They got like the, they bought a property together, you know? And that's like, maybe everybody, a big chunk of people leave here and they decide to like move to the town over because they want to start, you know, Nico Village kind of thing. So right. um, I'm branching off a lot, but I want to circle back to one of the things you said earlier, uh, John about like, we could do a million things. We could have outposts, we could become developers. We could sponsor these neighborhoods. Like we need to kind of focus. And I don't wanna put a cap on what cabin is even though I do wanna focus. But, but one thought is like, I think what cabin is and could be really good at is like just empowering people to build the thing that like build the community because we're like the global network, the back call, the digital community building that then like brings people into the IRL community building. And we're supporting that layer of like the supper clubs, the local clubs, the neighborhoods. But it's like, that's, I think that is where the juncture is of like, okay, you're the people on the ground. What do you want to do? Cabin can't actually dictate what you do at that stage. You, you get to like go to step seven and build the neighborhood one you know like you get to be or you get to just do the fractal thing because that's what the way you love it and you want to live in your town you don't want to like be off grid kind of vibes but like I kind of see cabin as scoped about like catching the people who are like holy shit like solar punk like oh I just <laughs> want my solar punk dreams to become to come true right finding the people to actually build with you 
so that you can actually make your dreams real. Lots of tools, lots of best practices, lots of coordination support. You know, somebody like, like Matai actually saying like, you could go in on renting insurance together and you could like share your car and here's, you know, information on how to do it. And here's three people who've already done it, who would love to have a call with you and like all of those steps. And then they, they build it. And my sense is like, people would want to pay a membership to like be on that journey together. That's kind of my like high level view of like cabin's value. But like, yeah, what do you, I don't know. That's just, I just wanted to kind of make sense of like, there's so many things. Like, what is, what is that? What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, I, I agree. I think that is certainly our greatest capability so far, right? Is like telling the story, putting out the VAT signal, creating the meme and like bringing the people together. Um, the, the hard part here is that like closing of the loop, right? The yeah. like, um, cause once we brought the people together, like it is really hard to do that, to do the initial coordination, to, to like, you know, to front this stuff or to get the, you know, that takes a lot of time and effort and, and resources. But the problem is once we brought the people together and then they're like, cool, we don't need cabin anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, and so oh, there does need to be yeah. some way to close the loop here so that we can keep doing that. Um, and I think membership feels to me like the, the, the purest form of this, because if, if it's valuable to people's lives, then like they should be willing to pay it forward or pay it back. However you want to think about it. Um, but it's also, it's like, it's public goods funding, which is like, it's inherent, it like, uh, you know, nobody wants to like pay for the, it's a, it's a, it's a collective action problem of like paying for the shared resource. I, I love the idea of starting small with like test projects and just like Savannah thinking about what you would want to activate. And I think you've already described a lot of it as like continuing the existing engagements, but then keep keep like going for a bigger goal of shared experiences. Um, and then just thinking about like how we could create a mixed budget to work into a proposal um, where it would be like, hey, in exchange for content and marketing benefit um, and just in like kind of goodwill, we're requesting X amount from Cabin. We're looking to also raise Y from the community based on interest in whatever we're planning to host so that people have a stake in it and it's not just like a pure handout. So the yeah. way I'm thinking about this tactically here is like, we have two open bedrooms here in Ojai, absolutely amazing hiking nearby. We do community meals all the time. People mm -hmm. can contribute to the garden. How many people in the area, what would you wanna contribute and how many people wanna contribute to have this be a shared space that we could fairly share access to. Um, and people could have an outpost in Ojai that they could travel out to. Um, and, and we could have like, you know, mixed, mixed use. It's not just single family rental. You could have, we could have gatherings here. We could, and I know our landlord would like, she's interested in renting it to align people and hasn't felt like that there's been that perfect person. So it's just sitting empty. She mm -hmm. would, I think be totally down. We've we brought a bunch of van life friends through and she's trusted us completely to have, we've had like four friends come stay for different amounts of time. Um, she would totally be down for us to rent this as a group, furnish it, set it up and then offer this as, and I think the question is like, what level of financial support would we need from local community? Um, and what level would, would cabin as a DAO be comfortable committing to help seed these projects? And like, what's our, pilot phase one approach and like what's what's our goal towards a steady state more and more decentralized local from the ground up and then how are we continuing to have that cabin network add value and i think that like the idea that there's multiple of these you can tap into that you can share resources amongst them like we can build and keep making those real through the experiences we're creating to like reinforce that value of of why the network's there because um you know uh, some, some, one of the caretakers and alchemists that we've talked to was like, Hey, I don't understand the value of cabin. And then he's like, Oh, but these amazing people came through randomly. And like, now I get the value because all of a sudden I'm having these amazing conversations with people that would have never come through if it wasn't for cabin. 
Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for how we can pilot these and like work with a cohort of people who have tangible opportunities where we can have local community leads through supper clubs, local clubs, and more intentional neighborhood resource sharing approaches for third spaces um, start to activate around this. And I think that like even us telling the story around this will be so beneficial to the cabin ecosystem as a whole that I think very quickly we'll probably like have more people asking to do this than than we could immediately fully support. So it's like, okay, how can we just try and keep building in an open source way to let other people tap in and and join this movement? Totally. Yeah, so I took some notes on that because there's some like next steps in that. So thank you, but I completely agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So following up on that, I think like one thing that would be really cool is if we had a set of places that you know had basically empty rooms um that they want you know great people to come to and we could get that get those you know either like and, and savannah this probably applies less immediately in in the boulder case but i'll get there in a second but in the ojai case in the neighborhood zero case maybe in the prosper case like there is a there is an apartment and like if you're a cabin citizen you can just go stay there for free you know, um, and there's like five of these to start and they're in places where you can go basically like try before you buy to be a part of these communities. Um, that, that might be a cool model. And then to bring the Boulder piece into this, I think the goal has to be, or it doesn't have to be, but one, one direction that would be really helpful is like, how do we work with you, Savannah, to get to the point where you have 10 people or 12 people willing to pay a hundred bucks a month for a third space. And we take on a lease and, you know, we, we start trying to grow that together. Um, cause, cause that feels like very tangible, real value that, that we can provide that you need. Yeah. Um, so like, and, and I think you already, you said what, what it is, right. It's the weekly supper clubs. It's like, come co-work at my apartment and let's see how it goes. And then it's like, okay, well, are we ready? But like, I think that, that sort of thing feels like a really tangible goal to me of like, if you come to me, you know, and you say like, we've got a dozen people that want to go in on a thing, then like, awesome, let's rent an apartment. And you're saying just to, just to make sure I hear you correctly, you're like, the the members of my neighborhood would be paying cabin but cabin is the one taking on the financial risk because i've validated that people that there's enough people who reasonably would pay right exactly got it that's and great. and does that i mean i think that's like a valuable thing versus you having to like sign a lease it is, rent an apartment. It is a valuable thing it is a valuable thing and of course i'd want to be like what happens if somebody drops off like da, 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 da. Oh. but i'm sure that could be we could figure that out but we would basically be taking on the risk and also then, you know, taking on the, you know, then if 20 people end up renting it, then, you know, we have like more resources to invest in other things. Yeah. Or then yeah, it does feel like a two bedrooms that then we can start offering to citizens to come stay. And then that's, again, like it's beneficial for citizens and that gets more people into your community. So if it just feels like very aligned. I think that's a really good like goal to hold going forward. And I think there's there's more to figure out, obviously, but like in terms of just us leaving with a clear, like let's try to move towards this and see if the, the people who are here actually want it as a way for us to experiment with with cabin's engagement in in what we're doing in Boulder. I think that makes a lot of sense. Um and yeah, and then just exploring other things like Matai said of of like are there on chain systems that that make everything transparent in terms of how money moves within a neighborhood. Um, One thing we've started doing yeah. is, is um uh, starting to collect rent payments in USDC using Coinbase so that our community rent treasury can earn five percent interest over time to reinvest back into community properties, and it's just been a matter of me helping everyone set up a Coinbase account showing mm -hmm. them how you can transfer it with no fees, easy to link up a bank account. Um, and, you know, I think broader around like building stuff around this, like it'd be cool to just explore within the base network if there's opportunities to 
get some more grants for more neighborhood specific tooling that we could invest in to, to make this all super streamlined. Cause like one thing that I, on the tech side of things, we could do everything. We could do a lot. We could do a lot of things with existing tools. Um, but it becomes this disjointed separate experience that needs a lot of like admin oversight to like make sure it runs super smoothly. Um, so that's where as we pilot with like notion pages and individual transfers of trust of like, Hey, we don't have a multi six setup, but like Savannah, I'm transferring you funds for the group event from the cabin wallet. Um, we can start there and then think about how we're shaping the, the product vision for what we could build. Um, but also one thing I just want to reiterate is that like, I think it's important for cabin to like very clearly outline what cabin is doing to invest in these neighborhoods through time and finances. Cause I, I often over index on finances forgetting about the value of the time that the people are putting in to help make this possible. Um, and also making sure that like people are feeling fairly uh, compensated for their time and effort. Um, and I think that like, that doesn't always mean financial compensation. But like, you know, what does, for whoever is that main liaison between cabin and the local community, what is like, what is a support system for them? Um, you know, if this wasn't my, my full-time job, I would have a lot less ability to do this. And I think that's the case for a lot of other neighborhoods where like people like this idea, but they just don't have the time and focus to like to take the next steps to really bring this to life because they're so busy with their day to day. So thinking about how we can help support more champions in the network to like dedicate time to this, recognizing the effort that it takes to do this deep community building and trust work. Um, and that like, you know, in my mind, it's just the content. I think if we emphasize the content engine around all this to showcase these stories that it will like help provide really valuable co content to the cabin network that can then help ease the burden of the financial side um, over, over time as we're both using that content to drive new members coming to the ecosystem and participating, um, as we're using that content to seek other brand sponsorships for even if it's like goods exchange of like, hey, cater our dinner for free, we'll promote your restaurant amongst our 50 people like that just you can you can start to iterate with these ideas of like how can we continue to create a system that doesn't purely rely on like member to cabin funding and how can we go and get revenue elsewhere recognizing the value of like what we're all doing and bringing to this if we're showcasing the story to other people um big time yeah awesome thank you for that um yeah i in all honesty, like I'm walking this line of like really wanting to join as a contributor of this DAO and like would love to be a part of a proposal to be paid to build out this project, other projects, very excited about that. Um, and then to your point about like external funding, in the next two months, the city of Boulder has community building grants that mm -hmm. they're launching. And I'm gonna be applying to like all of the relevant grants some of them are really small like here's eight hundred dollars max to host a neighborhood block party and i'm like yes but then also like here's ten thousand dollars to run like a larger community building initiative and like ten thousand dollars isn't like a salary but it's something that could help me you know feel great about making the time to build something like this because it's like building this is a public good for the city of Boulder. Like they are the benefactors of this work in addition to the citizens. So I just want to throw that in the mix here too, of like um, the city, the county, these are, these are funding sources where there, there is, uh, there is money. I don't think every, every city in the world has that money allocated. So it's, it's a privilege, um, but it's one I'm taking advantage of like in tandem with what could happen with cabin. And I'd want to like every step of the way I'm taking notes on like, what's working, what's like getting results, what, what experiments are not working. And I'd love to like also help any other neighborhood organizers in the cabin network, like find where those other external resources are too, because like those exist, you know, is it a nonprofit, like dishing out grants for neighborhood building these right. different types of things. 
Yeah, and both um, both of the neighborhood in SF and Fractal in New York, you know, have been approached by deep pocketed, you know, sort of nonprofit social impact um, funds, you know, to to like support local programming. And maybe I certainly don't want to like make any promises here, right? But like maybe that is another area where Cabin could support over time is trying to help build those relationships and get some kind of like grant money for local uh community building support 100 percent, like a gitcoin grant where it's like there's so many gitcoin grants that go to like the chapters of green pill or the chapters of xyz and so it's like it could easily be that but for something truly on the ground that's not just a meetup even though meetups are powerful like i could see that and we see the like gitcoin for zuzulu grant round like I think this makes a lot of sense as things start rolling out. Totally. And we, you know, Cabin as like a DAO typically doesn't apply for those um, for, for various reasons, but I think like individual neighborhoods, that makes a lot more sense. Um, I don't understand why it, it, a DAO wouldn't like, could you help me understand that? Why we don't? Yeah, there's yeah. kind of this like whole controversy about um, whether projects that already have a lot of funding should be applying for these things or whether it's more for like new upstart projects. Um, and we just haven't wanted to like get in the middle of that controversy. But I also think that controversy is maybe starting to like change a little bit and people are becoming more open to the fact that like, actually this is not a problem. Anyway, that's a whole separate can of worms. Yeah. Well, um, you are right that it's like the chapters that apply, not. So I, I see that. And I think, I think this brings up the really cool dynamic of one, like, when you talked about the grants from the state, local government, city governments, like Cabin is acting almost as a government as it's providing seed grant in effort and potentially resources to, through supper clubs and beyond to help this come to life. Um, and also it like, you know, what is the status of the local neighborhood, local club entity on its own? Like that people doesn't solely need to be affiliated with Cabin as their only you know, enabling network. Like I, I see a world where they're activating with other with other groups and like, you know, the the cabin community is facilitating the in-depth neighborhood building, but like Pizza Dow is sponsoring their pizza parties um alongside mm -hmm. of it or something like just thinking about how we can collaborate to like really empower local groups to be like their own organic entity that's like being supported by cabin and as many other sources, because ultimately what we care about is like positive community experiences. So Cabin can help bring that reach. Um, I was thinking of like, what if, what if this initial, what if some initial space funding was run through a similar Zuzulu grant where, where it was like, hey, we're funding a, a space for artists or for like, you know, there's some kind of story around what the space is going to be used. And it's a crowdfunded yeah. space where Cabin has a matching bucket to support a community crowdfund to not put all of the financial burden on cabin to start and to help having it be a mm -hmm. crowdfunded effort. Cool. So I know it's 1209. Matai, I know you mentioned you had to run around around noon. So I just want to be cognizant of your time. Um, are, are you you good or do you have to go soon? I should run. Yeah. Okay, cool. Savannah, maybe we can keep chatting just a Please. little bit more about like specific next steps and how we can like work towards this goal of you know, getting to a third space. Totally. Awesome. Thank you, this Mikai. has been a super helpful conversation though. I really I feel like we've made some great progress here. And I'm so, and I'm so glad we're recording this. We've got yeah, some great highlights same. to share to keep, to help bring other people on the journey. Um, and just thank you both for creating the time and space for this. And John, you're the host now. I'll follow Sweet. up with y'all on the ethers. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Cool. Um, what a day. Okay. This, this feels very alive for me. Uh, hope, hope it does for you as well it does tell me I'd love to just hear more about your aliveness though like yeah. amidst all the practicality yeah yeah I mean it just um I think what I was really worried about with this idea it it may I very much want there to be fractals everywhere you know 100%. but I I think there was this real question that I had a big kind of gray area in my head around around like how does this actually make sense to do? Oh, yeah. um, and we still, of course, have those questions, but it at least feels now like what I love having is like a very tangible thing of like, here's what we can work towards that 
checks out at a high level. Yeah. Um, so that's where it feels like we got to for me. And that's what, what feels very alive. Awesome. Um, so yeah. let's talk. So, um, yeah, what, like, what is the, what's the game plan from here? Like, if you know that, like, you know, you can come and say, like, we've got a dozen people ready to go on a third space and we'll like figure out how to make that happen. What are the, you know, how, how, how do you want to approach trying to get there to those dozen people? Like just myself or with cabin? Um, yeah, I, like both. Um, I think step one is having a regular, one regular gathering every week. Um, John and I are going out of town this weekend, but then basically every Sunday I'm going to be wanting to host something at our place. Um, having that regular cadence. It's like, as a community organizer, like I don't wanna push people to host things, but I wanna just like generously bolster and be like, oh, like just be the first follower to a lot of people's ideas and just be like, yes, like I wanna come to that, do it. Do you need help? Like helping people become hosts um, of their own things is a step. Um, so that's on the events event side is just gathering, having events, not talking about cabin at most of it, to be honest, just, just having it be a thing, like doing the thing, um, letting it be a pleasure for uh, things to be happening. And then, but that's like inside of this apartment building and this neighborhood. Next, we are there's a number of people in our like 15 minute walk radius neighborhood that um, are also hosting like events every week. So there's like, I'm not gonna name their names, but there's a couple that's near us who hosts like one to two events every week and are just stoked. There's a co-op house that's with some friends that are like really excited to organize community in Boulder and are hosting regular events on a lot of different topics. Many of which like, align really nicely with cabin's values um one of the people there is a guy named ethan who apparently like answered some uh like like he did some work for cabin in the early days apparently which was cool um like he wrote some articles if you remember and ethan ethan nelson well cool. yeah at, at that point this was probably in like 2021 we had like literally hundreds of contributors there it is so yeah so he so, was in there. So he's like, they're both very familiar. They're going to be at East Denver. They're like super tapped in. Um, so like having a larger network, a larger neighborhood of events and community spaces. Um, I'm kind of thinking about like everyone's living room is like a momentary third space to some mm -hmm. extent, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So just cool. like building that larger web. Um, and then making a point to invite my friends and the people I'm meeting at these adjacent gatherings to what's happening in our building and like weaving these communities. Yep. Um, yep. So that's like layer two. And then the next is like, how can, this is where Cabin comes in. Like I want to be probably hosting like maybe a monthly supper club if that's like financially viable for Cabin to support. Um, this first one is very, like, as you saw, very focused on what kind of neighborhood could we build in Boulder? What do we want? Um, what What's the excitement here? There's people who replied to my email that are like, I'm in Denver and I would consider moving to Boulder if like we built something correct. Like, you know, like, <laughs> like an email I sent out, people, most people who are coming are like, I'm a bigger yes because you changed the focus than not, which is super cool. Um, so just like the cabin layer, funneling those people in. Um, Cause yeah, my goal right now is just like, I wanna reach a critical mass of folks in this apartment building and within a five minute walk that are all engaged. 
so that I can actually say we're doing a fractal thing. Because I think like fractal hit a certain critical mass where it just like became bigger and now they just don't need to build it anymore. It's just like happening. It's already happening. And like, I don't know when that was. I, I think it'd be, I'll have another call with Priya soon, but like that that's my, my first, that, that's like phase one is just get it to a point where it's, it's growing because it exists, not because I'm growing it. Um, and I think that is a phase where like, it will be even easier for cabin folks to want to join because they're already so values aligned. Like strangers off of Twitter, like found fractal because of what it was. Totally. Um, I see th the next layer is like having these conversations with you, Matai, any of these other people that want to build neighborhoods too. Um, and just continuing to be in conversation about like, where are the pain points? What are you struggling with? Where do you need support? Be it financial, social, educational, um, you know, contacts, like, what have you and seeing like who how could cabin support and just keep asking that question because i think we we found some things we found like th third space when the community like reasonably can pay for it but i think i think there's i think we can keep crystallizing that because that relationship is like the big question that's looming inside of all of this that i want to keep pointing back to and keep like having the feedback loop point back to um Those things, applying to grants with City of Boulder is on my list. Um, and just researching like other organizations that support neighborhood building. Like, uh, I forget what it's called, but whoever like sponsored the neighborhood SF, like reach out to them kind of thing. Oh, um, it was uh, Eric Schmidt. Yeah, the Schmidt Futures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Next steps, those all feel, yeah, as much as like my, a part of me is like, I wanna make a cabin proposal and like put some money in there for me to like build this out. Like, I think I just more realistically, if I was in your shoes, I'd want to like see Savannah run small tests and get results and get results and get results and then like have conversations about cabin and like right. let's do the customer listening and like have a few months of that to be completely frank and like just sense into all of that and see like okay cool we we're observing this in experiment one in boulder and like who are these other people and what experiments are they running and just like kind of observing the whole thing as it as it's growing and like challenges arise Yep. And, you know, it's sort of a chicken and the egg thing, but like, I think, I think the infrastructure around like supporting supper clubs, it sounds like, you know, I'm excited to explore what, what support like for local clubs, like wants to be, because like a neighborhood is just, you know, the next step after a local club. So it's like, they, they seem like there's a ton of crossover there. So yeah, I, I kind of just see us like, playing with it for a fair bit of time, like a few months totally. and just seeing what's occurring. I would love like, I would love for like Matai and other folks to just hype this up once we have some more proof of concept, yep. like in the communication channels, in social media, on the discord of just like, we are doing this. This right. is an example. Like here's the storytelling of Boulder, come to Boulder. You know, like meet, go for a walk with Savannah, have a Zoom call with Savannah. Like, I want to talk to people about this um, and start like building the stoke of like, yeah, this is this is happening in Boulder. This is an experiment we're running. Um, Love it. Yeah. I think, just, exactly. I think there's a lot of stuff that's just going to emerge organically that we don't even see right now. And I want to be available to that. Yep. So just to recap basically plan is like we're doing it right <laughs> like we're, we're gonna build a neighborhood in around north boulder park um 
you're going to host supper clubs and let's say like to start, we're doing a monthly supper club. And that's like the first way cabin can, can contribute is basically like mm -hmm. reimbursing for these supper clubs. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really smart to have these like very, have these questions, have these intentions, like, like you talked mm -hmm. about, like these supper clubs are to talk about making the neighborhood. Um, yeah. And yeah, to keep doing that for a couple months and then for us to connect you with, with other people, like you are kind of ahead of the curve on this one, of course, but as we get more people into this sort of model, connect you with them um, and promote it and talk about it and, um, you know, try to help you get people to, to these supper clubs and get them involved, get them coming from Denver and, you know, get them excited. And then in a couple months, we check in and we see and we say, are we ready to like take a next bigger step? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's just, that just feels really practical to me given like I've run a number of communities in a lot of different contexts, like a co-working space, tons of different events. Like I just, I know that it's going to take a little while for things mm -hmm. to actually happen here. And I would hate for Cabin to make an investment that I couldn't fulfill upon because the bricks hadn't, the foundation hasn't been built socially. Totally, really appreciate that. Um, okay, cool. This sounds like a great plan. So Anna, I'd love to like, just have really regular chats with you about this. So, I mean, we've already been doing this, but like keep hitting me up whenever Okay. it's not annoying if I reach out to you Sweet. it's super not annoying it's not okay, only okay. not annoying it's like incredibly valuable and and like a very important thing for me so um okay. please do it okay I will awesome this thank is you. A really lovely thank, you for thank you for all your time and yeah I'm, I'm uh you know I can't like promise we're gonna figure all this out immediately and I, I know you sure. feel this way but like we are gonna figure something out here and it's gonna be great I think so I am like truly excited about how boulder could be this the seed and then there could be like a network of people building these types of things like truly a network city like i feel like this is like this it's a different shape than what has been but it like it really does feel like those two things together like actually no yep, totally okay awesome thank you thank Talk you, to you bye